Welcome to Talking Kootenai Books. My name is Keith Powell, and today I'm uh, pleased to welcome a Nelson-based author. We have Lee Reed with us today. Lee, thanks for coming over and uh, talking about your new book. Could you tell us the name? The name uh, of the book, the book mm -hmm. is Growing Home, The Legacy of Kootenai Elders. Okay, so I understand you're on a book tour, visiting local bookstores and mm -hmm. libraries, promoting mm -hmm. uh, the new book. When did the book come out? book came out late in January of this year. Okay. And um, thanks to much support from a Columbia Basin Trust Arts Grant, mm -hmm. uh, they made, uh, kicked me off um, with doing the book and also have supported me on this tour. Okay. So I'm very grateful for their help, okay. really for all artists. Sure, that's, that's wonderful. So can we just explore your book for a moment? Mm -hmm. uh, Growing Home is the name Would of the book, like I understand. Would you like to see it? Yes. So uh, A Legacy of Kootenai Elders. Mm -hmm. So what has been the reaction to the book so far? Very positive. Mm -hmm. uh, I find, well, it's a beautiful, visually a beautiful, stunning, compelling book with mm -hmm. photography, recipes, how-tos with gardening. So there's the practical piece. But people, most people of any age, really, are interested in and concerned about aging. Mm -hmm. And there's such a lot of bad press and fear about aging out in the culture and social media. Mm -hmm. I wanted to explore a different approach to aging and actually discover how people are doing it. Okay. And the only way, Keith, mm -hmm. was to drive around the West Kootenai on a scenic tour, mm -hmm. knock on doors, a complete stranger, okay. and hope for hospitality and a welcome. Mm -hmm. And that was there in 150%. Okay, yeah, interesting. S here you are uh, knocking on someone's door asking if you can... Uh, Talk to uh, them uh, about uh, aging uh, and okay. death. Wh and what, what was the reaction or typical <laughs> reaction to that? <laughs> Curiosity, mm -hmm. uh, people were interested in having their lives witnessed. Mm -hmm. They were open, mm -hmm. they didn't know what to expect, and it was the quality of the connection, the way mm -hmm. you and I are talking now, mm -hmm. I think that developed a sense of safety mm -hmm. over time. My perspective, people say, what was the writer's point of view? Mm -hmm. um, my perspective was that was that of per seeing everyone, every senior as a hero mm -hmm. and as enormously creative and courageous to make it through their days. Mm -hmm. So I came with a sense of appreciation and um, curiosity. I think curiosity is the basis of creativity. And many of them did not see themselves as heroes. Why would you be interested mm -hmm. in my life? Right. They said, I've just lived an ordinary life that's been through internment camps and the odd war mm -hmm. and displacement and revolutions or started again in this country. Why would you be interested in my culture? I'm just an ordinary person. Mm -hmm. And they weren't. Mm -hmm. All so, of these people were extraordinary. So it sounds to me like uh, you discovered the fact that mm -hmm every person has a story to tell. Yes. And buried mm -hmm. deep inside them is a story that probably is worth being shared with others. Mm -hmm. Now, how many stories did you include? And I noticed there's a lot yes. of photographs. How did that all come together? Well, everybody thinks I must have had this coherent plan and asks me about coherence. It started with inspiration about the topic. How are people creative with aging? Mm -hmm. And so I, I was motivated. Uh, and then it developed. I, it has 13 stories, mm -hmm. 13 interviews, okay. probably at least 12 hours face to face at people's kitchen tables on their land mm -hmm. where most of them still grow some sort of food. Um, so that's at least 12 hours. And I did everything by hand. I didn't want technology between us, bless it. I didn't mm. want a tape recorder. Mm. I wanted to be able to look over my notes and absorb and then bring out the essence of how the rich knowledge that people shared with me. And so this is a lot of transmission of knowledge. I call the seniors mm. the wisdom keepers. Okay. 
So oh, that's a, 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 an interesting analogy. And yes. uh, so as you uh, gather this information, mm -hmm. uh, I think part of the story is the photographs. Uh, let's yes. talk, talk about the photographs. They, the they photographs. really stand out in the book. Mm, yes, they do. It's beautiful. They are all of seniors on their land, except for the cover. Mm. Uh, uh, the designers could not find anything where we could put in the printing. So mm -hmm. this is, I think they call it a stock photo, mm -hmm. but so beautiful. It could be anyone's or your mm -hmm. or my shed or barn right. or uh, whatever. So um, photographs, I wanted a community experience where with my aging, I was getting to know new people, trying new things. That would keep me creative mm -hmm. and vibrant. Mm -hmm. So I invited six different photographers from different communities okay. into the photography. And we have 13 seniors, plus their neighbors and their friends mm -hmm. and their families in different communities around the West Kootenai. Then a design team, Polychrome Creative, of young, wonderful, talented young woman, women, mm -hmm. Uh, the Millennials. So they were part of a team. And uh, the Columbia Basin Trust grant allowed me to hire an illustrator, a well-known Nelson artist named Amber Santos, mm. who's the mastermind. If you've been in Nelson, with our gorgeous Orange Bridge, mm -hmm. behind all that youth art on the bridge. She does a lot of murals. Oh, okay. work. So every story here has uh, the illustration, the drawing, mm -hmm. black and white, of a plant that fits the character or the land of these seniors. Mm -hmm. And something else that inspired me, sure. Keith, as I went through the interviews, asking people in this er decade of climate change and so much disaster, mm -hmm. what gives you hope? Mm -hmm. And they all said, my land renews me. Mm -hmm. Or some people said, my plants are like a church to me. Mm. In so many ways, mm -hmm. their roots were in the land. Mm -hmm. I have much more to say about that in right. terms of seniors. Okay, so uh, they made lots of connections then. Uh, yes. And, and obviously mm -hmm. you were able to uh, draw those stories out and, uh, and mm -hmm. compile them in a way that uh, you know, is, is presented very nicely in your book. I, I just mm -hmm. wondered if we could talk for a moment yes. about the publishing process. Mm -hmm. Now, it sounds to me like uh, this was a really hands-on experience. You had a lot yes. of input into the way the book went together. Is that correct? Yes and no. I, I, I learned, very humbling, to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I started out, I haven't written a book for 40 years. Mm -hmm. I published one, The Regular Route with Hancock House in 1980, okay. a book of coastal fishing stories. Mm -hmm. And then most of my career has been with health services yeah. as an addiction specialist, raising a child, householder. Mm -hmm. What we all do, now that I have the freedom, more freedom as a senior, I asked, how can I be most creative? And I started to write the second book. Mm -hmm. I am no expert though. Mm -hmm. After 40 years, mm -hmm. I cared about the topic and I was frightened enough about aging to want to know how other people do it. How did I put the book together? I started off not planning on a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I began what did you have in with mind? the interview. I thought, I'll see if these stories, how they impact people. Okay. Everything was collaborative. Everything I wrote, I would take back and ask the people if this felt true enough to their voice. Mm -hmm. Yet there has to be room for the author's perspective. Mm -hmm. And so what I could bring was imagination and a lyrical style. What mm -hmm. I learned after listening more to professional writers is called the musicality mm -hmm. of the work. Mm -hmm. And that can even feature in documentaries and science. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized that the stories, that people were so impacted, they were grateful, appreciative. They couldn't believe how interesting their lives mm -hmm. were. It created all kinds of connections, these stories in their communities. That was my hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, enrich the connections for myself and others, build okay. community. I thought it, this has to become a book. Mm -hmm. And then I asked for help with editors. I see. 
So I, I, when I was uh, reading through your uh, material yeah. beforehand, it yes. would appear to me that there, the expression creative aging uh, popped up a, a, uh -huh. a number of times. Yes. Is that what you're describing here? Is this mm -hmm. connection, this yes. creativity that can go, can go into the aging process? The, the, I, the threads of meaning throughout the book feature on how seniors live creatively within the limitations of their resources, within mm -hmm. the physical changes, the shifts in their energy, the limitations of what happens to their bodies, mm -hmm. how they still find a creative investment in their lives. For some of them, yes, it's growing and processing food. Mm -hmm. For others, it's enormous talent with quilting, mm -hmm. um, with writing. Mm -hmm. uh, all these seniors, if something in their system fails, for example, uh, one of them has only, I think she built her kidney functioning up from 22% to 39%. That's Ali, Ellie Lazarus, who's now 39. Mm. They all have a plan B of what they can do instead to be creative. Mm -hmm. And all of them share and contribute whatever they create with their neighborhoods and their communities. This is part of their style of system of staying connected. Mm -hmm. The killers for seniors are loneliness and boredom. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that happening in my aging. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see how other people averted that. Mm -hmm. And so every story talks about where they got their faith, what nourished them, how creative people are, I mean, some of these people are famous. There's Tom Wayman, who's mm -hmm. a well-known Canadian mm -hmm. author mm -hmm. and university lecturer. Mm -hmm. He's also a farmer. Mm -hmm. And what, what is very creative for Tom, as an example, is sharing entrepreneurial mm -hmm. projects around the Kootenays. Mm -hmm. He's so involved in literary festivals. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to know at this point, I'm going to plug the Elephant Mountain Literary mm -hmm. Festival in Nelson in July, because that's where I learned about writing. Mm -hmm. When I did the book, I've never taken a course. Uh, I was oh so so in English in university. Mm -hmm. I just cared enough mm -hmm. to write in a relational style that's interesting enough that people want to um, have the book. Mm -hmm. After I wrote the book, I managed to get into a writer's group. They were all closed mm -hmm. to newbies like me. Mm -hmm. And I started to attend the festival and learn how the pros do it. Mm -hmm. Now, you've done three books. Mm -hmm. You're going to know a lot more than I do. Mm -hmm. And I put together the notes that now I'm sharing on this tour. Right. Many of my talks are now about how to write and create a book mm -hmm. from scratch. Really um, interesting that you've uh, mm -hmm. been able to learn so much, even <laughs> yourself, from this experience. Yes. Um, so when it comes to creative aging and, mm -hmm. and so forth, you've really captured those stories and presented them in a way that mm -hmm. I think people will uh, really enjoy reading. Uh, just tell me quickly about the reaction that you've had. Um, people, I think because it's done in such a hands-on way. This isn't a, a self-help manual mm -hmm. about how you can manage your aging and reduce wrinkles and look good. Right. Um, although there's a lot of physical fitness that mm -hmm. these folks practice in their own way. Um, it's really straight from their heart, how they live their lives. That's very appealing to people. Mm -hmm. They're not getting a top-down approach. I'm not telling them as an expert. Right. I'm talking to them as somebody who felt I needed help and needed to know how other people are managing. Mm -hmm. I needed to know I was curious, how do people deal with death? Seniors have gone through so many losses. Mm -hmm. Homes, family, many of these people have lost husbands and wives. Mm -hmm. How do they work with change? Mm -hmm. That applies to any age. By the mm -hmm. way, the talk I gave at the Creston Library yesterday mm -hmm. had a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old, and the rest were seniors. Okay. I yeah. found that so really quite a amazing. Uh, that, that, uh, would be it interested skills in with the change, yeah. and pretty much everybody said um, they're not afraid of death. Mm -hmm. It's a mystery. So just even that topic. Um, what I have a 95-year-old who said, what helped me to grieve the loss of so much of my family from ALS 
were all the lovely connections I have with the young people in my family and how we gather around. This, this guy, who's 95, still hosts huge dinners mm. where at his table set for 25, maybe 11 people at a time shows up, show up. Right. It's usually pasta, it's Italian. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of history also about the communities in sure. the book. Lee, it seems to me that maybe you've discovered the secret uh, <laughs> and that's uh, stay connected with your community and yes. maybe with yourself. So And be uh, creative. Yes. Try new things. Okay, so let's just wrap this up really quickly. Um, you've uh, launched mm -hmm. a, a book tour, so you're visiting libraries I and am. so forth. Uh, you've got two facets that you're talking about mm -hmm. when you go into the uh, presentation. Can you briefly just tell me what those are about? Well, one is the aging process mm -hmm. and th the skills from each of the stories, the philosophy of people, okay. how they, they restore broken connections in their lives, yes. and um, what gives them faith with aging, how they okay. meet death. The other is publishing a book, is creating a book from scratch. If I can do this just with feeling inspired by other seniors and the topic, I encourage everybody to, to act on your creativity, ask for help. And there's lots of debate about self-publish versus official. Mm -hmm. I chose self-publishing mm -hmm. um, for many different reasons, right. and I am so glad I did. Good. Well, thank you, Lee. We really appreciate you being a guest today. Um, your book is uh, Growing Home, A Legacy of Kootenai Elders. Yes. So really, uh, delves into the stories of many that uh, live here in the Kootenays. Mm -hmm. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Keith. This has been Talking Kootenay Books, and I'm Keith Powell. Welcome to Talking Kootenai Books. My name is Keith Powell. I'm your host. And today I'm uh, really pleased to have as our guest Jody Jacobs. Jody is based here in Cranbrook. And Jody, you've just published a new children's book, The Man and the Bear. So congratulations. Uh, exciting project for you. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. So uh, tell me about the inspiration. How did this uh, book come about? Sure, well, this actually, this book was based on a song written by my great-grandmother, mm -hmm. um, honestly, probably about a century ago. Okay. Um, it's been passed down to my kids, so about five generations. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something I've known my whole life as a mm -hmm. song, something my great-grandmother sang to my grandmother, sang to my mother, sang to me, and now I sing to my two boys. Okay. Um, and it was actually when I had my, my first son, and I actually remember sitting at my office at UBC Okanagan at the mm -hmm. time, right after Matt leave, and thinking, I want to do something. Mm -hmm. What you know? What can I do? And I think I was sort of craving a way to to maybe you know work from home or or, or do something for my family um, and get out of maybe like the daily sort of mm -hmm. nine to five mm -hmm. grind uh, with an hour commute on each side. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought about the book and I put it to paper and I emailed a friend at the time who's a really great artist and I said, "Would you be interested in this?" And she said, "Not totally. Uh, right now, I'm very busy. I just had a new new daughter." Um, and then I got pregnant again, and it just sort of went to the, the sidelines. Um, and then about a year ago, I was talking with my grandmother, and she's 82 years old. She said, I would really love to see this done. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I thought, yeah, it, it's time that we, we did this. So, um, you know, I, I started my own business. I'm working from home mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the timing's there. So I kind of did it off the side of my desk. And I'm very lucky because throughout the last 15 years of my career, um, I've been in touch with amazing editors and mm -hmm. I know lots of people who have worked uh, in publishing and I, I know great graphic designers and illustrators mm -hmm. and artists and I have a ton of support mm -hmm. and then me myself I do marketing right. um, so it was just kind of like if you know yeah I, I have the capability to do this I have the support network mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of support in town here and and uh, my grandmother wants it and yeah. it, it's time to go so. so it seemed like everything aligned just right to, to make that happen it so. did so yeah. let's talk about the illustrations the illustrations sure. are really neat in the in the book and uh, you know makes the book come come alive and uh, so forth so 
Can you, can you just talk a little bit about that? Totally. So the illustrator is a friend of mine named Tyler Pentland, mm -hmm. and I actually met him when I was working at UBC Okanagan, and he's an incredibly talented uh, artist, painter, and graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a very good friend of mine and a colleague, and uh, I knew immediately when I wanted to take this on, it, it would be him that I wanted to work with. Um, and we're very kind of kindred spirits with like minds. Mm -hmm. And um, I sent him the story, and, and I thought, good luck, because I know what this looks like in my head, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, I'm so close to this. And uh, he sent the sketches in, in a few weeks, and I was like, I love it. I love the old man. I mm -hmm. love the expression on his faces. Mm -hmm. um, you totally nailed it. Um, you know, bright, colorful, uh, fairly, you know, simple designs mm -hmm. on, on, you know, white background pages. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he was just a joy to work with. And, you know, right up to the last minute of when I was working with the printers, I was 1130 at night, um, you know, I forgot an R in this word, oh no. And, um, you know, don't worry, don't panic, I'll get <laughs> so, so tell me, how, how long was that process? How, how did that? How long did it take you? So it was, so, uh, it was probably about a year from mm -hmm. the time I actually decided to do it to the time I uh, got it done, mm -hmm. and I finally put a deadline on it. Like I really want to make like the winter's market, and right. uh, you know, um, get to Christmas sales, and uh, mm -hmm. it's it's time to do that. So um, November first was my deadline, and I probably just started going hard on it about three months before that, like okay. back and forth with the designers. So oh, good for you. Yeah. And what's the initial reaction been? It's been really, really good. Um, I think you know people can tell that this is a very personal project and there's mm -hmm. a lot of love in this book. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tribute to the women in my family mm -hmm. uh, who are very strong women, rebellious mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. um, and, and as well as this, uh, you know, my brothers, even for my brothers, like this, you know, we all know this song, we all sing this to our, our <laughs> children and our family and to put it to paper and um, I think, think people can like feel that love and so I've had people email and just say, like, I love everything about this book, and I'm so excited to give it to my children. Um, and so that's really special for me to hear because I'm so close to it. Um, it was really difficult for me to edit it and look at it critically. Right. Um, you know, it was tough. I, I sing it as a jingle in my head when right. I read it. Yeah. Uh, so having that feedback from the community, I'm like, because I, you know, the nature of my business being in marketing and public relations is, you know, I can promote the heck out of somebody else all day. Mm -hmm. But when you kind of turn the spotlight back on yourself and do something mm -hmm. for yourself, right. and I've had a lot of support in the community for it, but you just, it's, it's nerve wracking. Right. <laughs> so. Well, good for you. It's a, it, it reads really well and it's a fun book and I, I can just see the, um, the young audience eating it up. So awesome. I, I wanted to ask you about the, the process. So um, the song already existed, is that what, what you're telling me? It did, yeah. So the book isn't exactly like the song uh, was. There okay. was a few things changed based to make, you know, based on what made more sense for, mm -hmm. for print. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, something that was wrote so long ago, um, you know, modernizing it right. a, a little bit, you know. Uh, had to make sure that phone was sketched like a cell phone and not right. a old dial up, which nobody would know yeah. what, what, what it was, which uh, actually Tyler had drawn in the original proof. but. Um, okay. Yeah, it, you know, and because I was working with a, a friend and colleague who I really respect, it was a very, you know, natural, easy progression. Mm -hmm. We're both laid back and, um, you know, I started kind of exploring what, it, what I should be doing to, um, you know, publish and whether I wanted to seek a publisher. And I actually uh, sat down with um, Maurice Fritz, who mm -hmm. does a Kootenai Living magazine mm -hmm. in town, and he said, well, you know, you, you've got a designer and mm -hmm. you've hired an editor and you own a marketing company. Um, so you want the name of my print guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I thought, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, once I made that decision, it was it was just like full steam ahead, so. Well, good for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what, what's your family think of the project? Uh, they love it. They're okay. so excited. <laughs> yeah, they're so excited. My mom, um, you know, is selling books to friends and cousins and uh, okay. a lot of people all over the place. And I'm really lucky because I think I have a lot of people rooting for me and a lot of people on my side. Mm -hmm. So I've been literally shipping books to, you know, as far as Australia okay. um, from, you know, people who are friends with my husband to Victoria to all across Canada. And So uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a bit of a charity element to that too. too? Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So um, again, uh, you know the nature of my work or whatever I do a lot of cause marketing mm -hmm. and I truly believe that if you're gonna do something you might as well try to do it in a way where you're gonna benefit the most amount of people right. um, I know I know Jordan McDonald from Big Brothers Big Sister is really really well mm -hmm. um, she's a fabulous executive director 
Um, she runs the organization Awesome. Um, it's an organization that does so much for children in our community. And if I was going to do this, I, it just I knew I would want to tie it to a nonprofit. And Big Brothers Big Sisters. There's so many good um, organization in town that that work with with children and for children. But mm -hmm. um, that one just made sense, and I have a relationship with her. And uh, okay. yeah, so. 10% of every uh, book sold goes to Big Brothers Big Sisters, and at the launch, it's 50% of every book sold. Wow. That's a nice tie-in. Yeah. Uh, good for you. Um, this, what about the future? Any other projects in mind? Or? I think so. Like, I used to write a lot. I used to write mm -hmm. all the time. I would get up at 3.30 in the morning with coffee and Baileys and start writing. Mm -hmm. um, and then after I had kids, I lost that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I want to get back into it. My kids are six and four now, and I'm trying to figure out um, who I am as a writer now. Before I had kids, I was very edgy. Uh, I swore a lot in my writing. Um, there was feminist undertones, uh, some sexual innuendos, um, uh, which is uh, kind of ironic now that we're talking <laughs> about this very clean children's book. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm trying to figure out what, who am I as a writer now. Uh, I've matured a lot, and I'm, I, I miss it, and I want to get back to it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do have another children's book mm -hmm. that I've kind of been uh, working on and okay. playing around with, and. Uh, Tyler's excited about my, oh. my artist, so I think that'll be next. So lots of creative ideas uh, to come? I, I, I hope so, the roots of them, yes. the roots of them. I feel like I, I, I need to work more to get better, um, to get to the level that I would like to be to produce more. Well, Jody, uh, congratulations on the publishing of your first book. It's a fun book to read. Thank you. I, I'm looking forward to the reaction that my grand boys have, have to your new book. So uh, it, it, it was a pleasure to read. So congratulations. And it's great to have you as a guest today. So yes. thank you. Thank you so much. It was so um, wonderful to be here. And I'm really honored. And it's awesome to sit down and, and talk with you. And yeah. really appreciate your support. Great. Thanks. And uh, we'll have you back when your next book comes out. <laughs> great. Uh, my name is Keith Powell and this is Talking Kootenai Books.